Hello there and welcome to this first tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to download and install the Python programming language and also a quite a useful editor for Python called PyScriptor that makes it a bit easier for you to write program files. So first off I'm going to launch a browser. By the way, if you're using a university computer, then Python will already be installed there and you don't need to follow this tutorial. I'm going to assume that you're on your own computer. So the first thing to do is to navigate to python.org, which is the official Python website, and go to the download link on the left hand side. OK, then the best thing to do is just to scroll down and you're looking for the section below the title Python 3.2.3 so just underneath that there are various download links and you need to find the one that's relevant to you. If you're using an ordinary Windows machine then probably the link you want is the top one. If you're using a 64-bit Windows machine then you must use the second download link and a similar story goes for Mac OS. So I happen to be on a 32-bit Windows machine, so I'm going to choose the top download link. If you're using a different browser, then the next part might look slightly different, but just download this file um, as you would any other file. So in Chrome, at least, um, the file's downloading at the bottom left, and you can see it's not particularly big, 17 megabytes in size. OK, so once the download is finished, um, you need to open up the file and run it. Um, in different browsers, you do this in a different way, but basically find out where the file is stored and double click it. Or in Chrome here, I can just click open. And as usual, you have to give permission for running installers. So you need to be an administrator on your machine so that you can successfully tell the thing to run. OK. Um, I would just stick with the default options here in the installer. So just use the next button a couple of times to click through all of the normal options. And then the installer will start. Now I'm running some antivirus software here and certain kinds of antivirus software um, are a bit too paranoid and will think that the latest version of Python is a virus. Um, so don't worry too much. If you've gone to the official Python website, python.org, then it definitely is not a virus. So if your antivirus software is too paranoid and comes up with a warning, you can safely ignore that. So in this instance, mine has finished successfully. So the Python install installation is complete and I can click finish here. OK, so that's Python. Now what we need is the useful editor, which is called PyScriptor. So I'm going to search here for PyScriptor using Google. And what you're looking for here, it's the top link. Uh, you're looking for code.google.com slash p slash PyScriptor. So follow that link. And if you scroll down a short way, then you'll see on the left hand side there's a section called Featured and Downloads and there are various installers for PyScriptor. If you're running an ordinary 32-bit Windows then you want the first of these links. If you're running a 64-bit Windows you need the one that says X64 in it. So I'm 32-bit so I'm going to click the top link and click again to download the file. This should be a very small file, 4 or 5 megabytes, so this should download very quickly. And again, navigate to the file and open it. In Chrome, this is easy, just clicking open. So we give it permission to run. And we go through the PyScript to set up wizard. Now again, it's safe for you to just click next each time on these various options.
Now on the last page, um, it might be handy to get it to create a desktop icon to make it particularly easy for you to find PyScriptor and a quick launch icon. That's up to you. And finally, I'm going to click install. And there's an option at the very end to launch PyScriptor. Um, you can leave that checked and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to click finish here. So basically there are three main window areas, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side and one all the way across the bottom. So draw your attention to the window at the bottom here with this text in, that's called the Python interpreter. So in this window you can use Python as a calculator for example by typing in sums that you want it to do. So I've put 1 plus 1 here and it's given me the answer 2. OK, you can use Python but as you would an ordinary calculator here to do calculations for you. OK, so that's the interpreter window. Um, the problem with putting things in the interpreter window, it's a great place to just try things out but when you switch Python off um, you lose anything that you typed in there. So it's far better in fact to edit a file and save it so you can keep the work that you've done. And that's what this window up here at the top right is for. Now you can see when you launch um, PyScriptor, it already puts some stuff in this window for you. Now there's some text in um, at the top in green that we, can, uh, that we don't really need. We can actually just delete that. So now I'm going to show you how to write a very simple program in Python. Really we're just going to change one line here of this program. So you need to locate the area here that says def main. And you see on the line underneath it has the word pass. Just above and to the right is a button that looks like the play button on an mp3 player. Um, this is the button that you use to, to actually run a program that you've created. Now what happens when it's run is that the computer will look at the text that's inside this area underneath main and at the moment all that's there is the word pass which is a kind of code that means do nothing. So we're going to replace that text as I'm typing print here the PyScriptor interface is trying to help me by putting up this window to tell me all about the print function. So you can ignore this for now but actually this is quite a useful feature. So I put the word print here and now I need to open a curly bracket a curly, and again the editor is trying to be helpful. It's already put the matching closing curly brace in for me. And now inside here um, I'm going to put some text and in Python you need to enclose text by quotes. So I'm going to use a single quote, the apostrophe key. So I'm going to hit it once and you'll see again the editor is trying to be helpful. It's put in another quote to end the piece of text. So now I type my text. So I'm just going to say hello there. So you can see that hello there is enclosed between these two single quotes. So what's going to happen here, um, I'm going to hit the play button again and this time, every time I hit the play button, the computer looks at the text that's inside main um, and it runs what's there. So in this case it's going to run this line of code which is going to print hello there. So let me run it and you can see the text has appeared down there in the interpreter window. This is where the output of your programs will often appear, down here. OK, well now I'm going to add to this Python module a more useful function, one that we're used to from mathematics, and that's the squaring function. So I'm going to define, that's what def means, a function. I can give it any name I like. I'm going to call it f, and I have to say what the inputs to the function are. So I'm going to say that it's f of x, and I put a colon there to end the top line of my definition. Now if you hit return here, you'll see that PyScriptor has put the cursor on the next line but indented slightly. And this indentation is important. The indentation indicates to Python that the lines that you're typing now are part of this function definition f. So what are we going to do here? Well I want to make the function that squares numbers. 
So inside it I could achieve squaring by doing x times x. So if x was 3, then x times x is 3 times 3, which is 9. We need to do something a bit extra. We want to tell Python to return back to whatever it was doing with that value as the answer. So return is a way of ending a function, of showing Python that you're finished and that it can go back to whatever it was doing before with the answer. So now what do we need to do? Well, instead of printing the words hello there, let's print the result of using this function f. So let's try f of 3. OK, so what do we expect f of 3 to be? Well, f of 3, um, when the computer sees f of 3, it's going to look at the definition of f, and it's going to say, well, x is 3. On this line, then, it's going to go through one line at a time. And if x is 3, then this becomes 3 times 3. And then the return is telling it to return back to whatever it was doing with that value. So it's going to return to here with the value 9. That's what we hope will happen. Hit play again, and you can see that it worked. Down here, we see the number 9 appear. Now we can put more than one thing in a function. Um, in our main function here, we've got printf of 3. If I hit return at the end of that line, I get another indented line with the same indentation. That shows it's still part of this main, and I can do something else. So let's do f of 5. And we would hope then to see 9 from the first line and 25 from the second. So let's try this. And indeed, you see that that's what happens. So you can build up functions with multiple lines inside them. Let's make another function. So again, I need to be on the left-hand side with my cursor. I say def, which you use for defining a function. You can give it any name you like. So I'm going to call this function cube, and I want it to compute x cubed. We need a colon at the end of the first line, and then if you hit return, we're indented, ready to put something inside the function. So maybe guess what I'm going to write here. I want a function that cubes instead of squaring. So one way to do that is to do x times x times x. There we go. Maybe a nicer way is to use a double star, which is the Python way of writing a power. So x double star 3 is x cubed there. And again, we're returning x cubed. The word return says that we finished, and you can take the value back with you to whatever it was you were doing before. And over here, let's add another line to main to use our new function called cube. And let's cube minus 3 and see what we get. And we get what we expect, a minus 27 there. We still have the 9 and the 25 because, as I said before, when you hit play, the computer runs through everything that's inside main. So it runs through all of that indented text. And it stops when it gets to the end of the indentation. Before I finish, we better save the file. So we've saved our work. Um, so the way to do that is make sure the cursor is back in this top window somewhere. So this window up here, just put the cursor in there any way you like. And then you'll see that there's an icon there for save. Alternatively, you can go to the file menu and there's save and save as. So I'm going to save. A dialog box comes up asking me to for the folder I want to save in and for a file name. So try to give it a meaningful name. I'm just going to call this simple um, cube example. And the proper extension, file name extension for Python programs is .py. So simple cube example .py. Okay, thanks very much for listening and uh, enjoy Python.